in Unify Network Application for your Wi-Fi setting, there's one option called Multicast Enhancement. The tooltip says it will convert multicast Wi-Fi traffic to unicast when possible. In this video, let's understand what this setting is for, how it is implemented in the backend, and what's the effect. In the left side, I show you a RFC 9119. You can tell from the year, it's pretty new RFC. This RFC will help us understand the challenges multicast traffic faces in wireless environment and what the options are to improve it. Here it explains how multicast over wired is different than multicast over wireless because if over wired links, the transmission occurs at a fixed rate. But when it comes to Wi-Fi, the transmission rate varies depending on the station's proximity to the AP, and the throughput will change with the device movement. For unicast, the goal is to minimize power requirement while maximizing the data rate. For multicast, the goal is simply to maximize the number of receivers that will correctly receive the multicast packets. So they have different goals. In this chapter, it talks about optimizations. Then it mentions the idea of using unicast instead of multicast. That's exactly what the unified setting is for. You can read through this document. It's very interesting. This is the lab environment I'm going to use for this video. I'm going to use two Unify access points running two Mac machines. Each Mac machine connect to a different access point. And from one of the Mac, I'm going to run VLC to stream a video. You may know it will do the multicast. So it will be the multicast server. Then in another Mac machine, I'm going to run VLC client. It will receive the multicast package. I will run multiple Wireshark instances to monitor either the wired or wireless frames. And we will try to understand different settings in Unify Gateway, whether it will impact the performance of the VLC client or not. I'm going to disable the multicast enhancement, then enable it. Let's see what's the difference. And I will also SSH to the access point to understand how the feature is implemented in the backend. Okay, a lot of things to explore. Let's get started. Now let's start the testing for the first scenario. You can see at this moment, I do not have the multicast enhancement enabled. I have launched three Wireshark sessions. They correspond to the three instances I mentioned in the slides. And for all of them, I set the same display filter, which is the source needs to be the VLC streamer, the server, and the destination needs to be the multicast group IP address, which I will set. Now let me start the Wireshark capturing from the VLC streamer machine. I'm going to capture the the Wi-Fi interface. However, because of the way I do the capturing, I will only capture the Ethernet frame instead of the wireless frames. That's exactly what I want. Later, I will use another way to capture wireless frame. But for this particular Wireshark, I'm only going to capture the Ethernet frame. Choose the Wi-Fi interface, double click. OK, it started. Then move on to the VLC client machine. In the same way, capture the wireless interface. Then for the third Wireshark session, I'm going to use SSH remote capturing. The reason is I simply want to have a convenient way to capture the packets, not because I have to do that. Even though I'm SSH into the access point, I'm only going to capture the packets on the RJ45 part. Okay, start it. Then from the VLC streamer Mac machine, launch VLC player, start streaming. I'm going to serve one of my own videos. It's in very low resolution. It's not even 1K. Click on setup streaming. I choose RTP as the type. For address, I use this multicast group IP address. And for port, I choose 5004. Apply, then stream. Right away, you can see tons of UDP packets are being captured by this Wireshark. 
And in the Wireshark for the access point capturing, you can see the same packets are being captured. However, in the Wireshark for the VLC client, nothing has been captured. Why? Because we don't have any multicast subscriber yet. So in this VLC client Mac machine, let me launch VLC player, then go to menu, open network, click on open RTP stream, specify RTP multicast and the multicast group IP address, which I specified in the right side VLC streamer, the same part, then open, open, Immediately, you see lots of packets are being captured, and they are the same as the VLC streamer in right side, right? However, if you check the streamed video, it's very, very bad result. For a long while, you can only see one or two frame changes. This is not a acceptable video streaming experience. The root cause is, it's multicast, it's Wi-Fi, and we don't have the multicast enhancement enabled yet. Now it's time to examine the real wireless frames. Let me go to the third Mac machine. I'm going to use the Mac machine's built-in Wi-Fi sniffer to capture wireless frames. To do that, I need to know two pieces of information, the Wi-Fi channel and the channel width. In Unify Network application, for each access point, for example, this U7 Pro XGS. In the overview page, I can see for 5 GHz, the channel is 157, the channel width is 80 MHz. Then for U7 Pro Max, the channel is 40, the channel width is also 80 MHz. I know down this information, then go back to Sniffer. Since the VLC streamer is connected to the U7 Pro Max, and the VLC client is connected to XGS. So let me capture their frames one by one. Let me start with U7 Pro XGS because it's connected to the client. And now for the client, I'm facing extremely bad performance issue, right? Okay, I already captured multiple seconds wireless frames. Okay, these are the captured frames. Just by their looking, you can see they are dramatically different than and the Ethernet packets. From the protocol column, you can see they are all 802.11 frames. Most of them are encrypted, so I have no way to see the contents. However, I don't care about the content. I'm only interested in the destination column, the MAC address. Okay. You can see I changed the display filter to WLAN DA, which means wireless LAN destination MAC address equals to this hard-coded one. This is the multicast MAC address. So you can even tell from the description column, it says IPv4 multicast something, right? And we have a whole bunch of them. In fact, these are the packets which were received by the VLC client. And the source addresses, they are all the same, which is the VLC streamer Mac machine. And because they were either delayed or some were never transmitted, that's why we couldn't watch the video smoothly. That's why this testing failed in terms of performance. Before finishing this scenario, just to make the video complete, let me capture the wireless frames for another access point because our VLC streamer is connected to a different access point, U7 Pro Max. I need to repeat the sniffer capturing. Let me set the channel and the width properly. Okay, channel is 40, width 80, start. Then I will keep it running for several seconds. Stop it. Okay, then let me use Wireshark to open the captured frames. After setting the same display filter on the WLAN destination address, you can see we have the exact same situation as previous access point. The source column is the same. It's the VLC streamer Mac machine and the destination is the multicast destination. Because of this multicast situation, it causes our performance issue. Then let's go 
go to backend for the unified access point to see when the multicast enhancement is disabled, what the backend setting looks like. In the right side, I already SSH to the U7 Pro XGS. So let me show you the current Wi-Fi interface first, IW, DEV. Here it lists a lot of wireless interfaces, but for this video, we are only interested in one of them, which is corresponding to the SSID we use for this video. It is this ATH file. You can see the MAC address is exactly the same as I noted down in the slide. And we can confirm from the SSID, this is the one we used for this video. And here we can also confirm the channel and the channel width. The interface is ATH file. Then we can continue our investigation. Depending on the different chips it used to support wireless, there are different so-called private properties that can be set individually. The multicast enhancement is one of the private settings. Let me show you what I mean by private setting. You can run a command which is IWPRIV followed by the device name. In our case, we just found out it's ATH file. Then it lists a lot of commands that you can use to either write or read a given property. Let me filter the list. I'm only interested in multicast related properties. So MCAST. You can see some very interesting properties. For example, IGMP enabled or not. So let me run this particular command to see whether it's enabled or not. You know for switches, there are a lot of unified settings for IGMP, right? For access point, it does support IGMP settings. However, we do not have any such settings exposed on the UI, right? I'm just curious. So the way to run it is IW private ATH file, then followed by the command. Okay, so you can see the value is zero, meaning it's disabled. Let's check another parameter, this one, multicast enhance. This one corresponds to this video. It's about the multicast enhancement setting. In the left side, you can confirm, currently we have it disabled, right? So let's see what's the backend setting. Okay, it's zero, as expected. For the first scenario, we are done. Move on to the next scenario. In Unify Network setting for this SSID, let me enable multicast enhancement, apply changes. Then in the right side SSH session, let me run the exact same command. Let's see whether the value is changed. See, changed from zero to five. Non-zero value means it's enabled. However, Ubiquiti doesn't have any documentation explaining what's the meaning for the different values. Only Ubiquiti knows what file means exactly. But for us, it simply means it's enabled already. Then let me go to the Mac machines and the Wireshacks. Let me do the testing again to see whether the performance is improved. I already started the three Wireshacks in the same way. Let me start capturing. From the VLC streamer Mac machine, capture the wireless interface, but capture the Ethernet frames. From the VLC client machine, capture the Wi-Fi interface. From the third Wireshark, let me use SSH Remote Capture. Log on to the XGS access point. I'm only going to capture the RJ45 frames. Start. Okay. For all the three Wireshacks, I already set the display filter in the same way as previous scenario. At this moment, nothing has been captured. Then go back to the VLC streamer Mac machine. Go back to VLC player. I don't need to reset up everything. I can simply reuse the previous setup. So I right click on it, play. Then right away, you see the packets are showing up in two of the three Wireshacks. So far, everything behaves exactly the same as first scenario. Then move on to the VLC client Mac machine. Go to VLC player for the existing item. I simply say play. You can see the packets are being captured right away. So it seems it behaves the same as previous scenario. 
However, if you examine the video performance, you can observe it's playing smoothly. I can see the video frame changes. If I go to the VLC server, move the progress bar, then you can see the VLC client can change the frame immediately and continue playing. So I don't see any video streaming issues at all. The performance has been dramatically improved if you compare it with previous scenario. If you wonder why the huge change, let's go to the third Wireshark. Let me use Sniffer to capture the wireless frames for the two unified access points. Let me start with the U7 Pro XGS because the VLC client is connecting to it, right? So let me set the channel to 157 with 280. Start, then keep it running for several seconds, then stop. Then use Wireshark to open the captured files. Then if I apply the same display filter to only show the multicast frames, you see the difference? Nothing. We don't have multicast frames. Why? Because the access point converted the multicast frames to unicast instead. In the diagram, I already noted down the MAC address for the VLC client MAC machine, right? It's 9AF6 something. Then I go back to Wireshark, change the display filter to see the frames which are sent to that Mac machine. You can see we do have a lot of such frames and they share the common source. If you compare it with the left side diagram, you can see the source is exactly the VLC streamer Mac machine. And all these frames, they are unicast instead of multicast. Thanks to this change, now the VLC client can play the video smoothly. We are not done yet. I will continue to capture the wireless frames for another access point, the U7 Pro Max, which is connected to the VLC streamer. I need to change the settings in the sniffer for channel, change it to 40. For width, it's still 80. Start, then keep it running for several seconds. Stop. Okay, I have already opened the captured frames using Wireshark and applied the display filter for multicast destination. You can see the difference if compared to previous access point because this time we do see a lot of multicast frames. Let's use this diagram to discuss why the two access points behave differently when it comes to multicast versus unicast. Previously, we checked this XGS, which is connected to the VLC client. We don't see multicast, or we see is unicast, right? Which is great. That's exactly why the performance is improved. However, when we check this part from this Mac machine to the U7 Pro Max, the frames are still multicast. Why is that? Why the same multicast enhancement configuration change in Unify network application only change this part, but not this part? The reason is we need to consider where the frame is initiated from. So for previous case, the frames were sent from this XGS to this Mac machine. So this XGS has complete control. It can decide whether to transport a given frame using multicast or unicast, as long as it knows what's the receiver, the subscriber for this multicast. However, if you check this part, the frames were sent from the Mac machine to the AP. Yes, the AP has the configuration change to do multicast enhancement, but it cannot change the behavior of this Mac machine because the frames were sent from this Mac machine, right? So this Mac machine was not aware of whatever configuration change we made to the Unify network. It continued to send the frames using multicast. That's why the AP received the frames in multicast fashion. That's the difference if you compare these two access points. I hope it's clear. Okay. This ends the video. Thanks for watching.